Hello, welcome back. Third game coming up here for this best of five series. It is 2-0 in favor of Power Rangers. Um, game one, a little less convincing than game two, but definitely deserved 2-0 in favor of Power Rangers. We, of course, want to have five games, so we are kind of hoping, kind of biased that total aggression will make out and uh, we'll make, make up, make out, what? Yeah, we'll actually manage wow. to get a fourth game going. So yeah, we're in the draft, yay. And uh wait that's that's my go caster. <laughs> G Drans, welcome back. You realize how much fan fiction is being written right now. <laughs> I don't know. So much. Oh god, that was horrible. But I have to say, I mean I believe in them. I think they can do it. It's just it has seemed so like it has been a struggle and I feel like the draft has got a pretty big deal for like was a pretty big deal for the previous game. I'm hoping it won't be a big deal for this game. Yeah, the first game, I think it was just early mistakes and a few just little things that let them down. Mm -hmm. They were doing well most of the game, but the second game, their draft just wasn't up to it. I mean, they just had a try lane that had no damage, and it was meant to try and protect the Spectre, and the fact is, you pretty much can't protect the Spectre. That hero is awful, awful beyond reason in a laning stage, but yeah, I mean, they just get rolled over in that first game. A difficult game for them. It's probably one of those situations where you just have to you just have to step back and you go, eh, we pick something dumb. We can do okay in the next game. Yeah. It's difficult for them because now Power Rangers. It's it's an easy situation for Power Rangers right now. They they still have a, they now have a two game advantage over Total Aggression. They win this one. They've they've won the whole thing. They can lose like two games in a row and still feel relatively okay. I think so too. It's it's just. They go for something entirely different. We have not seen Failed's play Invoker yet, I believe. Have we? This tournament? Not at all. We haven't seen Invoker picked up by Total Aggression even once, I don't think. Yeah, because is it, is it not like, okay, game game one? Almost had it. Some tweaks and they would have gotten that game, I think. Yeah, definitely. Game they two, had a, a okay. good opportunity to. Yeah, game two they tried something different. And obviously did not work. Wouldn't you say then, you know, let's go back to what we're strong for. Let's go back to what we actually are, are you know, are strong with. And go back to what we did in the first game and then add those tweaks. You could do that. But the thing is, is those issues that they've been having have been a part of Total Aggression through the whole time. Their strategies have been good. The problem is, you know, the things like missing the axe dunks continually. Yeah. Edco has been missing a lot of axe dunks throughout this tournament. He's played a great act otherwise. And the team has been doing well with it, but for instance, running a dual lane, off lane uh, Mirana and Rubik, it is a weak lane. It is an easy lane to just continuously kill and prey on, yeah. and the Axe Dazzle relies a fair amount on RNG in getting those kills. So I think changing it up, there's no problem doing that, and Total Aggression, they've got an interesting and fairly safe draft for the moment, but Power Rangers, they pick up an Ember Spirit. Yeah, now the one thing that Power Rangers has been doing with that Ember Spirit is putting it on Cheshire Cat, and then running it mid and putting then Scandal on the safe lane solo and run an aggressive tri lane. Now I'm kind of confused about this because there is a bet rider in the team in the pool so far and Power Rangers have put that bet rider on Cheshire Cat most of all. So I'm curious to see how they're going to do this and if Scandal maybe is going to play this Ember. But it is very scary. It is a very scary hero. Morana will have her leap, which is nice, but Ember is so much more mobile than Morana is. That they are kind of... Like, if that Ember gets big, they're screwed. It's just that simple. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely the case. And th Unless they pick up some sort of hero that can... um, You know, some sort of carry hero that can get a Basher. I think Basher is a particularly great item versus Ember Spirit. Because if you do get a chance to and you bash him... He's a hero that spends most of his time basically going too far in. And then trying to get out again. And like you said, Mirana... You can only escape once from the Ember Spirit. You only have Leap once. Ember Spirit he has three Fire Remnants. You can even um, slight a fist into Bolas and Bola the Mirana like that. Yeah, I, I'm i a little bit worried for the side of Total Aggression. We have seen Ember Spirit has been ignored the rest of this uh, this series, though. Yeah. Nobody else has Nobody picked him banned or banned picked. him. We've seen it more yesterday, I believe, and we've seen a lot of Disruptors picked against Ember Spirit. So the question yeah. comes, like, if you see Disruptor banned, are you automatically going to assume that Ember is going to get picked up? I mean, Storm Doom... <laughs> like, they ban out both Great the Disruptor team. and the Doom. I was going to say, like, even if you don't ban out Ember, perhaps they should have banned out the Storm instead, because also uh, those 
our heroes against the storm. But they bent up the Enigma with their last ban, which kind of confuses me slightly, but just don't want to deal with the Black Hole. And that is actually a hero that Power Rangers has played before in this tournament. Five but now with all these spirits on, on Power Rangers that really, like, who is going to shut them down? Invoker, the thing maybe? About total like, aggressions. Yeah. Sorry. Well, this total aggressions yeah. lineup, they want more team fight at the moment. It is, they're saying, they, they pick the Invoker and the Venomancer. They're trying to be stronger in the five man team fights. So they're trying to play fairly stable lanes at the start. Maybe they go for the aggressive try lane. They can if they want to. They don't have to. But the nice thing for them is that even if they do lose their lanes, Total Aggression, they have way better team fight going into the mid game at the moment. Because Ember, Storm, even to an extent Shadow Shaman and Batrider aren't that great team fight heroes. They are very good at initiation though. Yeah. And at picking people off. I love this hero pick. Oh, I absolutely love it. I think it fits. It just puts everything what you just said in a bubble and in a hero because we have a silence. We've got team fight. We've got like, yeah, I like it. Control is good. I think this is smart. Yeah. The big reason why this is why this makes a lot of sense as well is now that you've actually got now that you, they have the team fight advantage and they have a reason to make Power Rangers team fight them. They can force Tower Rangers to have to fight them right now because Power Rangers, Storm Spirit, and Ember they can split push a bit, but they're not mm. great for it. Shadow Shaman split pushing. We saw we saw yesterday. We have seen Shadow Shaman split pushing. I mean, they can try it, but Death Prophet's one of the fastest pushes in the game right now. Yeah. But I mean, that's just a fact. So I think this makes a lot of sense for them because now they can push down towers very fast, and they can force Power Rangers to actually go on them. This draft to me. This makes a lot more sense. I'm interested in how to lane it, though. I guess the uh, the invoker's going to be solo safe lane, and they're going to go for the aggressive try lane again. Yeah, I, I I like it. I think, like, or at least total aggression. I'm still stuck on the on the death prophet. But yes, aggressive try lane, I think that's good. Because it looks like uh, Moon is going to be on the safe lane. And therefore, they can try to shut him down a bit. I mean, Ten killing off an Ember Spirit really is not going to be easy, so I'm not sure if they can actually do that. But they can at least uh, contest his farm, which is going to be slow slowing him down, and that's going to be the most important thing. Sorry for siren sounds. I don't know if you can actually hear those, but they were pretty loud for me. I heard them a little yeah, bit. That's okay. whatever. Cool. Maybe Probably not louder than Diego was earlier. Oh, well. Um, if you, I don't even know if you heard that either. But, uh, yeah. I like the aggressive trial lane. I think... That the draft is okay. It's scary. Power Rangers looks scary, but if Total Aggression keeps their cool and executes what they have in mind, I think they have a pretty good shot at taking this game away from Power Rangers. Yeah, the big thing is they have a great game plan this game, and unlike last game where they had a pretty okay game plan, which was split push, extend the game out, this, they have a game plan where they're in control of the early game, right? They have an aggressive try lane, so they control the early portion of the game. And in the mid mid game, they're, they're pushing and team fighting. So yeah, I like this. Yeah, let's take a look at who's playing what. As Power Rangers for this game will be on the dire side. We've got Scandal on the Storm Spirit this game. We'll be in the middle lane. On the safe lane, it is Moon playing the Ember Spirit. We've got ourselves FNG playing his Visage. And that will leave the Shadow Shaman played by J4, Mad Bomber, his uh, other Nick. And on the bottom lane, it is Cheshire Cat. Bat Rider for him, as we've seen him play that often before. I'm curious to see what Shadow Shaman is actually going to do here. If he's just here for the rune, the which is, doesn't seem to be the case because he's going to be too late. And I guess they're trying to dual lane to s shut down Edco, but this means that their safe lane is incredibly vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Moon is going to be crazy vulnerable to this sort of try lane. It, it can shut him down very, very easily here. He's going to have to do a, a lot of careful work. I love what uh, Cheshire Cat is doing. He dropped his boots by the tower that he picked up just so he could block slightly easier and he's now going to pick them back up again. The creeps are so slow on the off lane now that actually having boots makes your block worse. But yeah, maybe they're just going to try and first blood him there and then rotate the Shadow Shum around. That would be a sensible option and they probably can do it as well as long as Cheshire Cat gets a, yeah, as long as Cheshire Cat gets a couple of sticky napalm charges off. But yeah, on this side of... Uh, on the side of total aggression here, they do have an aggressive tri-lane. It's, uh, 
is led by Buakar again on his Mirana here, the supports for the team. It's Kircho and FMP. They're going to be on the Venomancer as well as the Nyx Assassin. In the mid lane, it's going to be Phalix going up against Scandal again. This time he's on Death Prophet and now on the bottom lane, Edco. He's on this solo safe lane Invoker and he's going to be gone on in a few seconds, well, I think. yeah. You say a safe lane, but he's not looking extra safe He's right not here. looking safe right now. He's going to die. All. He's got five char stacks of uh, Napalm. Six stacks now. Yeah. He's going to die. J4 is going to be very... Why is J4 not going in? Because the creep wave is so far away. I th I really think I could have they could have killed him, I think. Maybe they're waiting for level 2 on the Batrider. That's the only thing I can imagine they were doing, but Edco would have been so slow then. Mm -hmm. Even with the creep wave around him and cold snapping one of them, he's so, so slow. And he would have had and more stacks chats. being put up on him as well. Yeah, exactly. They could have maybe even got to 10 stacks, which is ridiculous. You never see 10 stacks going on anybody. Well, they're going to go now. now, though. Yeah, let's get, here comes the Shackle. Where's the Shackle? There it is. Firefly as well. Cheshire Cat's here. Four stacks. He's still going to try to run for it. He has got seven stick He's charges. Gone. He is still dead, though. Very dead. First blood, Cheshire Cat takes it. I think it could have been a bit earlier, but nonetheless, it is a kill secure, and it is a good start of the game for Power Rangers. Yeah, it's a good start for Power Rangers, but they're going to need to move their... Uh, they're going to need to move this Shadow Shaman soon, because... There's no way this dual lane here can do anything. Moon, though, they're trying to go on FMP here, but they've already missed the, the Searing Chains. Yeah. Oh, they might actually do this because that Soul Sumption hurt quite a bit. Nice Gale! Nicer Arrow! And FNG might be picked up here. One Star Storm. He doesn't pick it up. He didn't have the levels. Doesn't matter. He now has a Star Storm. No, he can leap and get a double star if he wants to. There he goes. Where's that Star Storm? He actually didn't send it straight away, which would actually... That might have just cost him the kill if he just pressed Q why, right when he leaped. Why didn't he do that? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess maybe he tried to and his animation got cancelled. He be. would have had a double star storm though. Yeah. Like you said, that's a, that's a free kill there. They do just about miss it. Maybe the damage wouldn't have been enough because it is only level 1 star storm. But either way, it's still two kills for the side of uh, total aggression in this lane. And I can only imagine it's going to keep on going that way. And Nyx Assassin, he's just going to go around the back again. J4, he's going to keep on trying to shut down Edco here, but Edco, he's already up to level 4. He has more defensive spells available to him. He's probably going to die a third time, though. Yeah. Or second time. The Shackle now level 2 as well. He's not going to be able to run from this. He's not even going to use his stick charges because he knew he was dead. By the way, uh, while that kill top was going on, Fails actually got the Storm Spirit. So that happened. Impressive kill, then. If you can get a kill on Scandal in the lane, I'm, I'm impressed <laughs> with you. Even if it is on a... A Death Prophet, which is a nice matchup for Storm early, because you just have so much harass potential, and Storm doesn't take harass particularly well. He does have nice armor, but his HP pool is pretty limited. Yeah, he's now going to be forced to use his self. He has got a bottle, though, so he should be a bit uh, safer from this point onward. In the meantime... PR are focusing on Edco hard. Yeah, there's a this. couple of people standing in the jungle waiting to take him down. Tornado will actually put Cheshire Cat up. Oh, Edco! Go back, back to your tower. Oh, longest range shackle ever. Maybe he can still make it out though. Ten. He's six gonna charges. be okay. He's gonna turn He's got around. TP's coming in. Still gonna get slowed though by FNG, who's gonna get impaled, EMP'd as well. But it's okay for both teams. Nobody is gonna die today, and uh, perhaps a bit of a rotation coming in. I mean, FNG is sticking around, but the Shadow Shaman oh, now turns around as well. Just Cheshire Cat, who's gonna be moving away from the lane as Death Prophet gets picked up in the middle lane. Scandal making it happen. Solo kill for him. Has his level 6 now as well with that kill, and yeah, solid, solid for him, for sure. Yeah, I mean, both these uh, solo mids right now, just, I mean, we saw it earlier, they both play pretty aggressively on each other. They're basically trading kills at this point. The thing for me is PR, they're putting a lot to try and shut down Edco on this bottom lane. He isn't getting much farm, that's definitely true, he wants to try and get his, uh, his early phase boots. Look but at J4 positioning. Yeah, J4, he's positioned here. They don't have the Batrider though. Where is that Batrider? He's, he's, in, he's in the base for the moment. Teleport back. Echo needs to be careful. He doesn't have his support near him anymore. He's actually pulling. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, oh, he is so dead. Actually, level 6 for Cheshire Cat, just to make sure Lasso is used. That's going to be... Like, there's four kills on the set of Power Rangers. Three of those are on the Invoker. That must feel pretty bad. Yeah, they're just focusing down the Invoker at the moment. And total aggression, they need to try and make their worth out of this. They have out their their worth out of, their worth out of this. Oh, I can't speak for a moment then. Oh, I have they need to try the and kill Moon on the top lane. That, that's the crucial thing here cuz Moon, he's he's getting okay levels here. He's not getting good farm, not at all. Um but he's not getting bad levels here and 
if your invoker is dying repeatedly, you need to be killing off this uh, yeah. this Ember Spirit, it, at least to try and get something. Because the thing for me now is Burka, he is not getting anywhere near the same amount of farm or levels that Batrider is getting. Batrider is going to have a uh, a very fast blink at yeah. this rate. And, and the thing is also, I mean, yeah, okay, Moon is not getting any farm, but if he gets levels... With levels will come farm, he'll farm faster with higher levels, so he's gonna be okay. And that's one thing that Invoker, actually, I have to say, I am surprised that Invoker is actually slightly higher level than Moon, as we have got uh, Kirsho maybe rotating around, the arrow will miss though, so no follow-up Gale as the Gale... Well. Great Gale. Good job, Kirsho. That could have, like, that could have been me. Well played, well played, well played. Yeah. You just have to spam that at him now. But he's sad no, that I got I'm... that on camera. He's probably a little bit sad about it, but they'll get over it if they oh. win the game. I think that's the objective. Scandal really. teleporting top, and the moment that he does that, fails, realizes that he's needed. He's gonna try to help out. Scandal already going up on Kershaw. Error will still hit. A Gill comes out as well, but Kershaw still dead. Three men silenced. There's not enough mana on Fails to go for his ultimate. No exorcism. He does have two bottle charges, though, as the Mad Bomber will still go down, so J4 dropped. So one for one, support for support. A lot of rotations coming out for uh, both teams. And in the end, I'm actually thinking perhaps Fails wants to stick around and just try to take the tower or something, because I'm not sure if his rotation would have been worth it otherwise, and it is actually FNG who's already back in mid lane to try and get some experience. Oh, now Kershaw as well, so supports gaining some extra levels on the mid lane. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, and PR, they're not making as good a use of that, that space that's created from that little fight there. Edco is free farming on the bottom lane in the meantime, and yeah. the uh, the Batrider, he's not dealing with anybody. He's had to go back to base, but he has picked up his Blink Dagger already. This is seven minutes, seven and a half minutes. This is a crazy fast Blink Dagger for him. Yeah, smoke put up by a total aggression, but they smoked right onto, onto uh, Observer Ward from uh, the Dire team, so that was a bit uh, of a fail. Rubbish. And, yes, and Mirana goes down. Actually, that was the first. I should have been there. First blink dagger uh, attempt. Well, I say attempt. First blink dagger kill for Cheshire Cat. Yeah, and he will have to wait for a little bit, but he can farm up in the meantime because there's level one flaming last. So it's got a fairly long cooldown on, but yeah, he's already got one good uh, rotation there, and it looks like they're going to go on Edco again here. Surprise. I like TR's movement about on the map, but TA yeah, they're not quite in. getting Vortex enough. Vortex as well. In comes the slow. J4 might not even be needed, but he comes out with the Hex and actually ends up taking the kill. We might have... No, no, we might not have anything. Scandal is, is kind of burned out of mana. I mean, the EMP still hit, but nobody to follow up on that one. I'm, I guess apart from FMP, but he was uh, kind of low on mana as well, and on top of that, he's only level 5. Yeah, at the very least, Edco, he manages to force the Storm Spirit to go back to base, but... This Storm Spirit, notably for himself, he's not as farmed as the Death Prophet though, despite having slightly won the last hits, I I guess he's just have to go back to base more often. And he has got the Death as well. Yeah. Interesting. Well, so far, with Shadow Shaman sitting at, uh, at level 6, with FNG sitting at level 6, who has spawned his birds, they're actually in the mid lane, helping push in middle, they can push on bottom, Radiance and it looks like, like even though they don't have necessarily a very push-heavy lineup, th it looks like they already want to try to pressure some towers, which is of course great for them, because overall, Total Aggression is the one with the better push. So if they can at least make sure that they trade evenly and that they push a bit for their s themselves as well without totally neglecting it, that can make a big difference for them, as uh, FMP is, is... Oh, he thinks he's so safe. Wants to try and get some levels here on the bottom lane, but everybody is coming to take him down. Yeah, I mean, everybody is always going to this bottom lane to kill people, whether it's Edco or anybody else. On the top lane here, it looks like Bukar, he started a fight versus Moon here, but he's not able to win that fight. And with Cheshire Cat coming in as well, he does go down. Ed Bukar actually tried to start that fight, he arrowed Moon and then went in on him, but Flame Guard means that the uh, Starfall does basically nothing. Looks like uh, the Nyx Assassin thought it was safe to uh, leave the tower range because too many people miss missing from the map. We've got a bit of a pressure here on the mid lane. Exorcism is up again if Death Prophet wants to use it. Cold Snap coming out for Cheshire Cat. His blink is going to be off cooldown in a second. Oh, the EMP rocking at just the right time. Cheshire Cat silenced up, tries to buy items before he dies and uh, dies then, also, of course, as well. Venomancer with the gold for that one. Nice for him. He's uh, quite rich, actually. 
Yeah, and this is the start of how things, of how Total Aggression want to do things. They want to force PR to try and fight them. At the very least, PR, they do get a counter tower at the same time, but they have the Death Prophet. She's going to be able to push towers a lot more often and a lot faster than the, than the, uh, than the Shadow Shaman can do. And the Shadow Shaman is the only push for their team. They don't have much in the way of team fight to back it up. And they have, I mean, their big hero who can do AoE damage over the team fight is the Ember Spirit, and he's very underfarmed at this point. Whereas they have like Edco, he doesn't need quite as much farm to do as much damage. He needs levels. That's his main yeah, thing. Yeah, he needs levels. Both of them do, but he's a bit he doesn't need as much. And look at this, they just go to top again. They're going to take this out quickly. They don't even use the Exorcism. Not even they might even just go for a tier 2. Yeah, with the Exorcism still aligned, they will force uh, Power Rangers back. Power Rangers won't have the wards from the Shadow Shaman for another 40 seconds, and Storm and Bet are kind of the only ones that can actually fight. But if Bet jumps in, in theory, if FMP is fast enough, he can get an impale off. And there's, of course, I mean, there's tornadoes and EMPs, so they probably they feel like they can take it. And with the with Exorcism bat, yeah. on, like, do you really want to initiate on that? There is a smoke Well, luckily, it's only level 1 in Exorcism, so it's not doing quite as much damage. I mean, level 2 basically triples the damage on it. It goes. It goes from pretty scary to absolutely ridiculous, but yeah, I mean, they're still going to get the free tier 2 from this. They do take out the tier 1 in the meantime, PR, but I don't see Total Aggression stopping. Well, they are not able to kill off Fisher Cat, even though they tried. It was pretty close, though. In the meantime, in the mid lane, Power Rangers is doing the same thing, but then on the tier 2 bot middle. There are some teleports coming in to try and stop this from happening, but the tower is already dead. I, uh... <laughs> I was scared there for a second that I would turn into a bit of a base race at 12 minutes into the game. That would have been an crazy fast base race and a really bad decision for PR. Because the thing about PR's push, they drop down the wards on one tower, that's great. They'll yeah. get that tower, but that's wards down for 110 seconds. Death Prophet's Exorcism, it follows her around and you can use it more, slightly more often, basically. It's, it's uptime is, is higher, basically. Well, with now uh, three towers down on both sides, am I still remember right? Yeah, I'm right. I mean, oh, Buka wants to go in a mid lane. He's gonna go on Ch on Buka. Uh, sorry, Cheshire Cat's gonna go on Buka here. Yeah, this is a very say, easy one. Buka is, is just happily farming, or he was anyway until he died. So assumption will clean him out, or not, or the fire will. I thought for a second there he might have lived, but the fire coming out from Cheshire Cat, who almost finishes up his four stuff, by the way. Uh, it's uh, he has got his four stuff finished actually. It's uh, it's pretty scary. Power Rangers, it's four to nine. I mean, if we compare this to the first game, the number of kills are not half as high as uh, as that first game. But this is a game all about towers. I yes, think. it is all about map objectives and initiation. As a tornado does not hit a scandal, the cold snap does, but he is still able to get away from that EMP. That's a field spot. Yeah, I mean, if they'd have hit the tornado then, they would have been able to follow up immediately with the silence, and that would have been a dead scandal, but if the tornado doesn't quite hit, and it is hard to hit at longer ranges, um, it's not like they were really far away there, but scandal can see it coming, so... Yeah, they don't get the tornado up on him there, but... Well, it looks like they're going to go and fail. It's up on the top lane. Moon doesn't have too much in the way of damage, but it does have the maxed out flame guard. Yeah, in comes the hex, the ward, the arrow still comes out upon Moon, but there's not enough damage, and failed will die, and... I have to say, I'm, I'm kind of getting scared for Total Aggression. I just checked the 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 graph as well. It's only in favor of Power Rangers. It might be not that much. But the way this is going, it's not going to get any, any better for Total Aggression. And what are they going to do to try and get back in this game? Because it feels like it's slipping away from them. It is slipping away slowly. But the big thing they need is they need their mech. Oh, FMP. Then they can push these towers easier. Has to go away again. J4 not gonna get that kill. It's Venomancer so that dies in the meantime in the middle lane as Edco running for his life right now. Drum charge being used as well. The shackle, just enough mana for that one. And that's gonna give Moon another kill. Killing spree now for the shutdown Ember Spirit who now has phase drums and is sitting on a score of 302. Yeah, completely shut down in the laning stage, and then he was just given a little bit of time, and now he picks off a few kills with a little bit of help, and yeah, this is dangerous for Total Aggression. At first, things look good for them, but they keep on just giving away small sloppy kills here and here and, and you know, all over the map, really. Just every now and again, somebody gets picked off, and the fact is, is that even though PR are probably going to, you know, they're going to scale better with farm this game, I would let them farm at this stage. 
just so you can get farm on yourself, you can finish the core items. Death Prophet can finish her, uh, she'd be able to finish her ATOS. They can get the mech up on the Venomancer, and then they're very capable of winning a team fight versus PR and pushing faster. Yeah. So I think that's the way to do it. Play it safe for the moment, but right now, the thing that's stopping them is this ward vision on the side of PR is, is very aggressively up on them. And can they have the double warding in the mid on just uh, times out? But yeah. They have wards up that are giving PR opportunities to see who's out on their own and then just, just jump on them every single time. Yeah, and on top of that, I mean, you're talking about jumping on someone, which is, would of course be Batrider's job, who now also has a gem, so he can also jump on Nyx's assassin. Uh, but uh, Shadow Shaman can jump on people now too as he finished his blink as well. And yeah, Total Aggression probably has to play passive, and they, they, they might have known that, but it's just... Oh, it's not going to be allowed. FMP bottom lane. He's been gone on by Scandal here. Scandal's used up most of his mana, but they don't have any stuns left. Did he just gone upon got gone upon three on one and got away with a kill on his belt? No, FMP just walked into the trees and found him, and then Storm Spirit killed him off. And they missed the arrow, I think, so they just didn't have any stuns to stop him from uh, from TPing out and. He's actually going for a straight BKB this game. I think this is a sensible choice. It'll deal with failets that well. Yes, you don't want to have to go for straight BKB on Storm Spirit, but it makes the most sense in this situation. And it's not like he's been shut down that badly. So he's he's still okay. We've got a smoke up for Power Rangers. They want to try and take down something here on the bottom lane. Is it forward from Scandal's already there? They want to try and take down Marana. Moonlight Shadow not keeping him safe with a gem on the Batrider. And that is Marana picked up. Next to that, the courier happens to be around there as well, and actually was carrying the Yasha for Buka as well. So that will be uh, a bit delayed for himself. Faelix almost gets caught out by J4 there as he blinks forward very aggressively in the enemy jungle, pretty much on his own. But he could have maybe had some help from uh, from Moon as well as Scandal. And yeah, I mean. I'll say it again, the big problem for Total Aggression is they're giving away too many kills at this point. It's okay to be a little bit behind on kills, the part where they're about 4 to 8 was fine, but now people just get picked off all over the map and there goes Nyx Assassin again. Yeah, actually wards used for that one, which is, you know, it's a, still a support Nyx Assassin, so it's quite an investment to use that on him, but it just shows how comfortable they are, that they don't need to push anytime soon, they, they are doing okay. The regen rune now taken by, uh, by J4. Fills up the bottle for Cheshire Cat while he does so. Yeah. And they are going to be and able to find I some like people. The they jump PR up the high ground. They grab someone. Or tornado is there first, though. Poison Nova, because of the tornado, does not hit on Cheshire Cat. Shackle on the Venomancer, who will not go down, apparently. It's the Batrider that goes down. Nyx Assassin getting some revenge. The Vendetta still hits, but it was. Uh, there was no dis disable, so the Shadow Shaman gets away. I am quite surprised that nobody dies on total aggression. I really thought. That the Batrider was able yeah, to at least kill off the Venom. I'm surprised that they sent Edco back here, because that could have been an opportunity to even just pressure the high ground. At this point, the thing that you have to remember is that you don't have to be on the high ground. Their total aggression, they pop off the exorcism, they right click on the tower, and suddenly all those spirits are going to burn down that tower. Instead, they're going to try and oh, attack Edco. on one side, defend on the other. It's not going well, but they do manage to get Edco out of there, but now they can't kill this high ground. Well, they're going for it, but... Moon and uh, Moon and Scandal are probably going to TP up here soon. Yeah, they're yeah. TPing in. Jackal fails. His exorcism is going to go away fairly soon because he dies. Marana picked up as well. They look for FMP. He does not have a vendetta, and the drum charge is being used. They really want to. And Blink is up in seven seconds. FMP, you. Sh and he does not have a teleport. Pops the spike carapace, but it doesn't matter. There goes the vendetta. Blink forward just too late. Centaur goes down, but it's too late to catch out FMP, and the bet rider is too far behind. Actually, where is that gem, anyways? Oh, Bedrider died, of course. No visit has the gem. Yeah, I mean, they'll probably switch it over to the Batrider again. Yeah, they do put it back on the Batrider. For me, the big problem here is that total aggression. They're worrying too much about defending their own towers. They dropped two people off to go and defend the tower on the bottom. Yeah, sure, Venomancer. He needed to go back to base. He's taken a lot of damage and ran out of mana. But again, Edco is going to be gone on here. Poor They're split Bella. up too much. They're just split up too much. They need to just group up. They're so much stronger than PR in a 5v5 engagement, as long as they can actually just, you know, go for that. But they keep on having, you know, 3v3s or 2v3s or 2v2s and or, or just small ganks by PR. And PR, I mean, look at their heroes. They have Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit, 
Batrider, they they have a pickoff lineup. They have a mm -hmm. gank lineup. Mm -hmm. Don't split up versus a pickoff lineup. It's very simple. I kind of feel like Total Aggression is kind of stuck with that Invoker because, I mean, they picked it up first, right? It felt like they were denying it to Power Rangers rather than wanting it really themselves. And now Edgo is stuck playing an Invoker, and you can tell that he is just way too cocky to play that. He he is walking around like he's an axe. Yeah, he's just up too far, and he's not with his team. I really do feel like the, the big problem is they're just not 5-manning. They do have their mech finished on the Venomancer as well. So, I mean, just go for it at this point, because the way this game is going, it can only go PR's way if it keeps on going the same way. So, you know, change it up, for TA, total aggression, they need to put the pressure on them, and, well, they're trying to go on Moon here, but, yeah, he's uh, he's got remnants, and he's well out of there. That tornado will miss, and FMP is actually walking in the wrong direction, perhaps he'll try to cut him off. As Moon is actually planning of oh they can wait for him right here they you should you can see the remnant did not know they didn't see the remnant because he's gonna be back there f to farm and they can wait up yeah there he is they can wait him up but they're not gonna try they're gonna actually defend because the lanes are pressured and uh, pushing in and they don't want to lose any tier Radiant three towers tower is under yeah I mean this is the problem they they went for the kill then when they probably should have just been pushing the lane. Yeah, it was good to try and f force Moon to go back to base. That was great and all. But it took so long because they were trying to just uh, just run after him and try and get the kill on him that they were probably pretty unlikely to get. Moon is ultra mobile and they just don't have the lockdown at them at this point to get him. They should have just said, okay, we forced Moon back to base. Let's just run at them high ground. Let's just go for it. We have level 2 exorcism. We have maxed out witchcraft. It's a good chance for them, but Scandal here... He's got sight over them because he's got the the static remnant down there. Do give flying vision. That's one dead cat lady. Nice last yeah, and okay. Every time they lose one person, total aggression basically you just can't fight. Yeah. They need they're getting dismantled there. by PR. That's what it feels like. Do you know what I mean? Like they're getting pulled apart in every direction. Yeah. And now Roshan is gonna go the way of FNG who's <laughs> soloing her up with his visage birds here. He might even die to Rosh, but that was pretty close. If he got if he got hit again by Roche then and bashed, he would have died. Yeah, he would have died. Ooh, giant chicken coming right up. That's gonna be Roshan dead. That's gonna be a Aegis going the way of possibly FNG. I think it would go J4. They actually. do no, get yeah, Scandal though it. on the bottom lane. They managed to pick him off, which is a pretty good kill. That's to a have. big kill. But now Moon is gonna go on Phalets on the top lane here. It looks like he wants to, but actually no, he's waited it out and Flame Guards ran out now. Oh, oh he's found Kurt Cholo. Yeah, it takes a it, it takes a poison they have over. The mech. They're gonna turn this around. Stuff. He can't go anywhere. Lincoln's has already popped, and actually he's gonna turn it around. Hello, Cheshire Cat. Down goes Venno. Down goes Failed, but Moon will get picked up as well. And actually, Failed managed to live for the moment. Cheshire Cat doesn't want to try and take the rest of the kill, and that's I guess the danger of fighting next to an enemy tier one tower. They're yeah, not and up the mech as though. well. The mech was what turned it around a lot of failets there. Oh, Edgo, oh, that gem had totally wrecked him. That's going to be one dead invoker. Cold Snap doesn't do anything anymore. We might still have a dead Shadow Shaman, though, but he gets 4 7 to safety. Now fails completely out of mana, Burka out of mana, and that's going to be Radiance middle Tier 1 Tower, I'd like to say, attack. but so far the lane is not pressured in. I mean, I, they keep having these skirmishes who are always going to be favorable for Power Rangers purely because of their lineup and it just feels like total aggression they had this plan or they have this plan and They're they keep being forced into Power Rangers plan rather than to following their own plan yeah that's exactly it the momentum of the game is being controlled by Power Rangers Power Rangers they're never grouping up and that's a good thing for them because they're so much weaker than the side of total aggression when they're grouped up they don't have a mech on their team they do have the Agonims and the uh, the Aegis on the Visage but he still doesn't want a team fight. They still don't want a team fight. And that's with a 27 or 21 to 7 uh, kill advantage going their way. They're still afraid of team fighting total aggression. But total aggression, they're just falling further and further behind. Eventually, it's going to get to a point where they're going to lose these fights. And Edco on the top lane, if they can get a pick off on these two, then hopefully, finally, total aggression can try and push up. But yeah, Arrow will it's fly be in. Difficult. Hits upon Moon. Is there going to be a follow up? In comes Edco. Goes for FG first. EMP will burn Moon. And he is going to flame guard, try to run, can't make it though. Death Prophet still picked up by the Batrider on the bottom lane, but the top lane should be total aggressions, or is it? No, it's not, not for now. Marana dies, Venno dies, and Edco is left to his devices, running for his life. Tiered 1 tower will drop. 
They might have gotten Moon, but FNG is such a beast at this point, and I mean, he still had an Aegis as well, so even if they would have gotten him, he would have been alive in no time, as Edco is actually not backing off for the moment. He's gonna try to have maybe a bit of uh, an Aegis burn still. He is gonna get that Aegis. Nice for him, but he might pay for that with his life. FMP coming in to try and help Edco out. Spike Carapus. Oh, still dead though. Uh, Visage with the kill. It I mean, there, those birds are just hurting. Edgo is going to be gone upon now. Slowed down. Soul Assumption coming his way, but that's only a zero stack Soul Assumption. Not getting the kill in the end. It's one for one again on the top lane. With, of course, Steel Tower going down. And perhaps, is it actually the end? I don't think so. Or is it Poison Nova coming out? Still Soul Assumption's coming out as well. FNG, he is not afraid to fight up against two. He has proven that right now. He has, of course, got the Gravekeeper's Cloak as well able to deal with a lot of magical damage coming his way will still get picked up in the end but he got Edco and he's creating so much space for his team it's just like how long was he standing there for how many people came his way to try and take him everybody. down everybody everybody and the big problem is they came in separately they came in in ones or twos and that's not how ta should be fighting this again they went for that fight on the top lane i thought it was going to be a great fight for them they initiate up on the visage as well as the ember spirit but Phalitz was off on the bottom lane, he got picked off, the Nyx Assassin was around mid, I think, and they need to take these fights as a team. They're just not taking these fights as a team, and even when they, it looked like they were going to start dictating the pace, again, they just... Ah, total aggression. I, I almost feel like it's just their, their almost amateur nature. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're allowing PR to pull them apart, because PR are just a more experienced team. Yeah. I, I agree. It just seems like they're slightly out of their comfort zone, not knowing how to react to what Power Rangers is doing, and therefore it's falling like into panicking. the trap that Power Rangers is uh, is setting for them, basically. Yeah, it feels like they're panicking a lot, and the big thing that they can do is they have a strategy that could have worked at any stage of this game, could still possibly work. It's difficult, but it still could possibly work. And if they can get that, ooh, ooh scandal. Does scandal. Uh, Edco seems to know he's here. You can see the footstep, so yeah. But doesn't get the kit. Doesn't so. go for it. No. Instead, they need to. They need to start off. getting people back. Valets is. Uh, Valets is not. He could be caught out here. Tornado EMP. Shashurket though. Already in the lasso. Looks for a lasso. Finds it. Edco is gonna be the target. Moon is he gonna be able to put out enough damage? It looks like he can, especially with J4 coming around with the ether shock and also whoa. He goes down though. Death Robert with the kill. Exorcism, still off cooldown, can use it if she wants to, but she just got a double kill, killing off the Batrider without the Exorcism, saving it for a later day, as the gem gets dropped, looks like Moon is gonna try to take it down, but FMP got it instead, Lincoln's pot, Moon still take by taking an arrow, and he might actually drop Silent Stop, will get taken down, triple kill for failed, can they take down this big ass bird as well, FNG trying to fly away, gets impaled, gets Vendetta, gets Starstruck, and killed off Visage, is the fourth kill on the side of Power Rangers. The fourth death, I should say. That is four for one. They might have lost the Invoker, and but this that was the, the best fight This is the huge they opportunity they had. This is the best opportunity they're going to have for a while. Death Prophet's gone off to the bottom lane. Oh no, that's actually the uh, Kircho, the Venomance has gone off to the bottom lane, but they he, they need him. He's got Poison Nova. It's level two at this stage. He's got the mech as well. Oh, everybody's dead though on the side of PR. They just need to group up and take this. I mean, it's easier for us to see from a casting position, obviously, because... I mean, we can look at the net worths view? and everything, but yeah. yeah, exactly. You have that, you have that overhead view, and you can see a lot more of what's happening. We can even see the map and the enemy wards, things like that. But yeah, I just feel almost sorry for Total Aggression right now because they're just not realizing their strength. Shishir Cat teleporting in on the visit burst candle around there as well, and Edgo is the target once again. Edgo is not having a fun game. He's died ten times this game. It is not a fun game to be an Invoker. No, it is not a fun game to be an Invoker, and like you said, it doesn't feel like Edco is quite comfortable in this hero. The heroes he's done best at are heroes like Axe. I mean, the hero he's done best at has been Axe, you know? Mm -hmm. It's been those crazy, manly, aggressive heroes, and yeah, he's... Yeah, they just need to group up, though. I mean, I keep on saying it, but it's... It's like horrifying to see them win a huge team fight like that versus PR. Take out four of their heroes, they lose just the Invoker for it, and then they don't group up. Even though, I mean... Yeah, they were losing, the birds were doing some damage on the bottom lane, but they're, every time they back off, the game is going to last five minutes longer. 
and every five minutes they add on to the time is more time that PR are getting stronger and stronger in. And that's even not with PR being that far ahead on items on some of their heroes. I mean, the only one who's significantly far ahead of where he should be on his hero is possibly the Batrider and the Visage as well. The Visage yeah. is very, very strong at this point. Uh. He's even going for an Assault Cuirass, but Storm Spirit, he's just got a Hex at this point. It's 30 minutes in, Hex BKB. That's not huge. And Moon, he's only got a Lincoln Sphere, so he's not a huge damage dealer. On yeah, the I feel other like... side, though, there's also not that much damage coming out for uh, for total aggression. I mean, their Marana is having Radiance less farm than the Shadow Shaman. Attack. I mean, she's sitting yeah. on having a Maelstrom ready Radiance and a Yasha as well. Fortified. So it's it's not that bad. She's putting out some damage, but considering she's supposed to be the hard carry, it's not really living up to the expectation. Fails is doing okay, though. Now with, of course, the Shiva's Guard, maybe starting to build into a BKB, having his Rod of Athos as his first item. Actually, do they really want to try... And go for this. Shadow Shaman is around. They're there. gonna keep on trying to go for it. He's ran out of his. Uh, he's ran out of his uh, rune though, so he is gonna go down for this. But oh, on the top lane here, this could be very bad. Yeah, they want to try and take down Moon, but from behind, in comes J40 with the hex up and Echo and a shackle up on Marana. In comes Moon, down goes Marana. Edgo is going to be the next hero. Impale is being attempted, but he got shackled and killed. Nyx dies, and Edgo will be short to follow. Three dead here on the top lane, one dead on the bottom lane, and it's only the Venomancer that gets out alive, and he's forced to teleport to try and prepare his wall Radiant's of wards, I would assume. Attack. I feel like a broken record, but the problem is exactly the same again. Why? Total aggression, they split up. Yeah, why, why was Failed on the bottom lane? That's the question. Why was Failed on his own on the bottom lane? Why do they have two people on their own on the top lane and then another mid? And then... Yeah, they're just too broken up at this stage of the game. And I mean, the gold advantage, it, it's too big. And now PR, they can finally go for the high ground here. It's taken them a long time to do because they don't have the heroes for it. But Aww. yeah, Venomancer just uh, He was just the only one alive. Them. You know, sometimes There's not you're much he could do. He's gonna buy back, but yeah, well, what what can they do? They nothing. they just don't have anything left now. Well, this is now with an AC as well because you know, not tanky enough. At least Venom. I mean, actually, Power Range is playing this very careful. In the bottom lane, they did manage to take down the racks. As Scanner actually takes a point blank arrow. The stars were still hidden though, and Buka might be tanky enough to actually take this jump forward from Scandal. He's gonna make it out alive, and there is no extra leap on that Marana. So that is a storm spirit that will live. I'm surprised they didn't get more. I mean, yeah, they definitely won that fight with Power Rangers. They essentially only got one Rax and two towers. I mean, I that's thought the they could take an entire heroes, lane though, Rax. But that's the nature of their heroes, though, isn't it? I mean, they don't even... They've just finished up the Desolator on the Ember Spirit. They don't have that much in the way of physical damage. If you look over their lineup, most of it's being done by Visage Birds. Yeah. I mean, Ember will start doing it eventually, but he's still fairly under-farmed, considering he's below the Death Prophet, and... That's with Total Aggression losing this game pretty hard at this stage. Fundamentsu! Careful there, buddy! If only you had uh, a teleport! <laughs> you're a bit screwed, Venno. He's used buyback as well. This yeah. might be the this might be the end for them. I, I think mean, PR, they're gonna try and group up, finish up. They do now nah, they're actually gonna go for Roshan first, but Venno's down for a minute. They can probably finish this. Hey, now. Look at the range tracks on top lane though. Those vet those birds of the familiar birds are doing work. What a rat. FNG. Confirmed rat dota. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Storm will take an ages. And uh, I think it's. I mean, how do you fight that? Aegis Storm massively out farmed. You've lost a, uh, a melee rax on the bottom lane. Range rax are being are backdoored by Visage. No, they're already gone. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's it. I mean, I think everybody has played against it before. It's just super annoying. There's no way out. Unless there's a big mistake from Power Rangers. That's what they have to hope for at this point. At this stage, they have to hope that they get a five-man wipe on the side of PR, and then that they and finally realize that they just need to run at the enemy base. They have the heroes to do it. I mean, Phalanx, oh, he's got maxed Phalanx out is last in It's going to be a problem for him. In comes Scandal as well, as Phalanx is already picked off. Not even a chance to put up his ecosystem. He does not have a buyback for the moment. They take down the Venomancer, the Nyx. Buyback was there for Edco, but he is alone together with the Mirana. Mirana might be able to take down the Aegis from Scandal, but Scandal will be back up with full mana, full health, as Mirana will get picked up. The GG has been called. Total Aggression will be the second place for the Spring Cup. Well, Power Rangers will take first place. We didn't even talk about the prizes, but that is $700 going the way of Power Rangers, with $300 going the way of Total Aggression. I have to say,
I mean, we knew that Power Rangers were the favorites for this tournament. Total aggression, though, especially in game one, they definitely showed that they have got a lot of potential. Just yeah, like this team has definitely got a lot of potential. They basically just need to go over their replays and say, here's our mistakes. Let's just, next time we can look at ourselves, we can go, we, we, we're breaking up. We, we've got a five-man rush at you lineup. They've got a death profit. They have the team fight to back it up, but they just... They got pulled apart by PR in that game, and that's the experience of PR coming through, especially in games like this, because it PR used to play a style like that. In fact, PR still do play a style very similar to that, oftentimes, mostly with a Lycan at the moment. And yeah, PR, they picked the lineup to try and pull apart Total Aggression. And Total Aggression, they just never got their lineup in one place going forwards. That was the problem. I agree. It's, it's a shame they didn't get to take one game off Power Rangers. Because three zero, they yeah. I thought really they'd do it. That. To be honest, I thought they would definitely take a game off at some point. Yeah. I I thought they were going to do it in the first game, but that game again, it ended up being it just lasted a bit too long for them, and they just didn't quite get their lineup all in one place, all doing the same thing. I think that's the biggest issue for Total Aggression in this in these games is they just get picked off a little bit too much. They're occasionally just in the wrong place, and experienced teams like PR, if you're in the wrong place, they're you're just going to kill you. Yeah. yeah, they're just going to kill you there and then. They're not going to mess about. Positioning is everything. Well, that is going to be it for the Spring Cup. This was, of course, the last match as this is uh, was the Grand Finals. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us on the journey through the Spring Cup. And um, if you want to stick around for some commercials, you can, of course, do so. That will support me, most of all. <laughs> and otherwise, have a great evening. I know there's a lot of great Dota to watch tonight, so make sure you check that out. And do you have any last shoutouts and plugins before we... Uh, you know, close the door on this tournament? No, just thank you for having me on doing this. I've definitely enjoyed this tournament. It's been, I think, it's very surprising as far as um, these games are concerned, to be honest. Like, I've not, I, I didn't expect as much from these teams. Total aggression, they tried earlier on, but they do manage to get all the way to the, uh, all the way to the finals. And yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, again, as usual, twitch.tv slash setmyjibs is my, uh, my Twitch page. If you go and follow me there, that's like a, that's like my main place for using everything. It's basically a portal for everything else. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, thank you for being here, of course, as well. That was uh, It was an enjoyable tournament. And as you said, it was just... I, I also didn't really expect that much from the teams, but they, they delivered. They definitely delivered with some nice and active games all around. You can, of course, also follow me on Twitter. It is uh, Shiva Gaming. It's my Twitter handle, also handle and everything else if you want to follow me and support me there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your Dota. And uh, we'll be back some other day. Bye-bye.